Oh, right, I'm here with Lucy Porter, comedian, uh, is back out on tour again. So thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to talk about myself. Brilliant. And on that note, then, how's the Be Prepared tour going? And how's it oh, to be back out in front of a proper audience again? Amazing. Yeah, I mean, it is so nice to be back. I, I sort of hadn't realised how much I'd missed it until I got back on stage. And I was like, this is it. I'm back. I'm, you know, back where I belong. And uh, it's, I mean, it was slightly embarrassing, obviously, because the tour is called Be Prepared. Yeah. The fact that we had to cancel it <laughs> because of the pandemic. So we started doing it in March and then had to put big signs up everywhere saying Be Prepared has been cancelled due to unforeseen circumstances, which yeah. is quite humiliating, really. So it is just nice to be finally doing it. It's not as embarrassing. We saw Chris Ramsey last night who'd called this tour the 2020 tour and then it was like just a riff. <laughs> I know, well, it's like when the Euros were on and I was like, it's the 2020 Euros yeah. and I can't get my head around. It's We've all time-travelled a bit, I think, in, yeah. in the last sort of couple of years. We've all, I think everybody's feeling that sense of, was that really two years ago? Because it was like there was a whole 18 months that didn't count, basically. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? That it's mm. literally has been two years. Mm. so I mean on that note what, what have you missed and least missed about touring around the UK um, obviously seeing the audiences touching the audiences smelling the audiences I'm still not allowed to lick them <laughs> but eventually that will come back I'm sure um, and well I've even missed weird stuff like uh, motorway service stations because obviously the comedian's life largely centres around yeah. you know going to Lee Delamere and uh, <laughs> Watford Gap and all these places oh. So yeah, um, yeah, the weirdest things will just set me off, or I'll have a little bit of a sort of emotional wobble where I'll be like, "Oh, against us, pasty! Oh, yeah. it's been too long." <laughs> I had that sort of moment thinking about Watford Gap because I had a horrific incident there many years ago when I was a teenager. Oh no! Oh yeah, we went to see. Well, I used to like stay with my grandparents. I managed to let my parents let me stay with my grandparents when they went on holiday. Um, we went to see Bon Jovi and Milton Keynes. Oh, yes. And got left behind at Watford Gap. Oh, oh no! Which is all right, but I'm from Liverpool. <laughs> oh my God, that's a bit of a way, isn't it? Yeah, so we had to find my friend's dad, and they had to come and get us at two o'clock in the morning. Oh my from God! Liverpool. And oh my God! Yep, we drove back in absolute silence. <laughs> oh, yeah, see, that's the kind of thing I realise how I'm now getting older because I now am sympathising with the parent. I'm looking at that anecdote from the parent point of view yeah. now, rather am, than yeah. the uh, the poor teenager who's stranded. But yeah, God, I know. Well, my kids are eleven and nine now, so these things are not far off. The being woken up at two in the morning to come and collect your children. <laughs> not from two hundred miles. Away, though. I really hope not <laughs> although if it was Liverpool I'd be happy because it's always a pleasure it was a pleasure yeah. to drive to Liverpool it's good fun yeah okay on that note then what, what's life at home been like during lockdown for you um I mean it's had its ups and downs Graham to be honest uh it, you know I think like many people there were some lovely moments of tender togetherness yeah. and then there were also some bits of us all crawling up the wall uh, the homeschooling was a particular disaster for us because obviously I have never thought I'd be a good teacher and it turns out I was absolutely right <laughs> to think that I wouldn't be because it was uh, I did at one point I did look at my children and think it would have been easier to teach the cats how to play jazz <laughs> clarinet than it would be to teach my children the basics of, of arithmetic so um yeah it was kind of it was stressful but we coped by basically not doing it right Okay, so uh, the, I mean, the tour then is called Be Prepared, like we said. What, what, going back to the beginning of the pandemic, what was the one thing you weren't prepared for? Aside well, from schooling? <laughs> we had literally no toilet paper in. And, you know, my, my husband is a fairly heavy user of toilet paper. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying that. Uh, so there, there was, you know, genuine terror where you're sort of like, oh, it's fine. We'll be absolutely fine. We don't, I mean, how much toilet paper do we need? Um, turns out a lot. Uh, so <laughs> I, I'm now stockpiling toilet paper when everyone else has finished just because of the pure terror of, uh, of having to use other things in the house <laughs> for that purpose. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, we weren't very prepared for that. Although the thing is, we are terrible hoarders. Yeah. So actually, it was the one time where because I, I go to the supermarket and when I'm buying, you know, the stuff we actually eat, I will pick up oh, a, a packet of dried mushrooms. I've always wanted to be the kind of 
person who puts dried mushrooms in a risotto and never do so we ate a load of really weird stuff that I had in the cupboards uh, over lockdown so we had the dried mushrooms we had chestnuts I bought chestnuts yeah. once thinking I'll put like vacuum packed and I thought I'll yeah, put yeah. them in a stew never I'd never done that but I did over lockdown and we had some salmon soup mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, we, we that was the only thing. We ate lots of really weird stuff, but the salmon soup remains untouched. <laughs> yeah, it, would, it wouldn't get anywhere near my house, that. No, no. I think we might just bin it, but that would feel very decadent. Yeah, what, what about lockdown disasters then? Were there any any disasters? Kind of uh, oh. or DIY, anything like that? Oh my God. Yeah. Well, we're still, we're actually fixing. So you, I mean, behind me, you can't see the full chaos, but our bedroom is full of stuff because we are fixing the paint job that we did downstairs, um, which I, I, I think we just took lead of our senses completely. So yeah, we tried to paint downstairs and ended up with an extraordinary blue and yellow that, um, oh, nice. that we now have lived to regret. So, but yeah, we made some very bold decisions. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I would say there hasn't been, I mean, some of the children's haircuts, I would say it turns out that as well as not being a teacher, I'm very much not equipped to be a hairdresser. So, you know, I think we all learned a bit about ourselves, didn't we, during the pandemic? And for many of us, it was that we do not have as many skills as we might have yeah. hoped. Yeah, and we're trying to forget those skills now. They, they can go yeah, back, yeah, back yeah. in the cupboard for that. Thank you, hairdressers, for all that you do. Yeah. Uh, you know, the un, the un sort of seen heroes, uh, oh, people like hairdressers, yeah. you know. Absolutely, I'm with you on that. Okay, so I mean, the tour, like you said, be prepared. I mean, it goes back to your days of being a brownie and a guide. I was a Boy Scout, and I can't think of anything I took out of that. I was a book, was a cub, and a Boy Scout right throughout my childhood and teenage years. So I know exactly what that was all about. Um, I took nothing from it into adult life <laughs> at all. <laughs> you except, say that, you see, except, except a ton of nightmares. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, it it wasn't for everyone. And I must admit, so mine largely dwells on being a brownie because I love being a brownie. And then I sort of, it petered out for me during the guide years a bit. Um, But that's kind of the point of the show is that you think you haven't retained anything from being a scout or a guide or a brownie or whatever but actually you know you could probably at a push you could probably still identify a crested grebe or tie a fisherman's knot you know it would come back to you yeah, so i've got I've one been to a reef knot yeah there you go you see yeah. so i've got an example i've got various examples anyway in the show of things it's kind of it's using the scouts and the guides as a way of sort of discussing what is useful, what are useful yeah. skills to have, what helps you be prepared for life, can you ever be prepared for life, and, uh, you know, and that kind of, those sort of broad philosophical questions, but then there's also a little bit of campfire singing, and yeah. I get to show off my badges, so it's all uh, good. That that takes me into my next question, I mean, the, 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 bra- the brownies and scouts badges, I mean, they've obviously kind of developed over time, is there any mm. kind of skill that you think they should include now as a badge that kind of maybe wasn't around then yeah I mean they they are actually much more forward thinking having sort of researched this show a tiny amount I mean I don't really do much research because it's a comedy but uh, I did look into it and the scouts and the guides are there are you know they're all very there is a smashing the patriarchy badge in the brownies now right. and obviously if you win that your dad has to sew it onto your uniform okay. <laughs> that's my little joke <laughs> um but, so, but yeah, no, so actually they do teach a lot of quite useful modern skills because, you know, in my day it was all making a cup of tea and uh, drawing a lovely picture of a pony, whereas yeah. now they do actually do some quite useful stuff. But I mean, it, it's, I think, you know, tech skills and all of that stuff are really important and they do teach all of that. But I actually think it's still quite good to teach old fashioned things that are completely useless, like semaphore. <laughs> Because yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, like the idea of you ever needing semaphore in the modern world—if you—if you need to communicate by semaphore, you are absolutely done for, aren't you? <laughs> let's, yeah, let's absolutely, face it. unless you're a gra- unless you're a guy yeah. or a brownie. Yeah. Yeah, and but I love the fact that they still sort of uphold those old slightly. I think it's quite good to learn things for the sake of learning them. Yeah. And you know that is something that I think we're in danger of losing. So yeah, there's there's all kinds of stuff that they do teach that's very useful. But I I quite like a little bit of nerdy. I mean I'm quite nerdy, yeah, so yeah. that's what I like. Yeah, I mean what what's the one thing you learned from that time that you've been able to pass on to your children? 
Oh my God, so much. I mean, uh, they always carry money for the phone box, even though I don't think I've seen a working phone box <laughs> yeah. since about 1986. So, uh, so I, uh, there's lots of kind of little things like uh, toasting marshmallows oh, and yeah. little first aid things. There's loads of stuff that comes back to me that I think, because I talk quite a lot about my brown owl, Sheila, in the show. So she was the brown owl, the, the adult leader that we had in Brownies. And yeah. she, there's loads of stuff that I, I sort of hear Sheila's voice <laughs> as right. I'm peeling a parsnip. I go, oh, how would Sheila have done this? And I pass that on to my children. I mean, what, what's your favourite story? I mean, I've got, I've got one of mine, which is another horror story, and I don't know how I got let out after this. But <laughs> Go on, then. We went and did... Um, somehow, I don't know, but we got to the point where we did an award, and it was like we had to do three. It wasn't the three peaks, but it was three peaks in Wales, and we had to do it over a, oh over my God. a day. <gasps> and camp overnight. They let us camp over. It's like American werewolf in London Territory. It was that kind of... <laughs> And they let the three of us loose. And I got to the first base, which was in the middle of nowhere, undid my backpack and realised I'd forgot all my plates, my cutlery, my knives, my forks. I'd forgot everything. Oh, no. Yeah. And not only that, I then, so then I had to do two more peaks with that, eating baked beans out of a tin, cold. And then <sighs> I had to then tell the entire story to 60 parents at a presentation. Including <laughs> <laughs> my mum and dad. Oh, but you see, that is very much the spirit of scouting and guiding, the yeah. resilience, yeah. pouring cold beans directly into your throat. I mean, yeah. there, there couldn't be a better analogy for yeah. what and the whole way, of... Going back to what we said about learning, taking lessons forward, that's something I've done since then. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly, right. exactly. Eating cold baked beans is the life skill that will never desert you. I don't. Well, I mean, actually, we um we have been camping a few times with the kids, and I, you know, I do this show about how much I love the the guides and the scouts, and you know, uh, and I absolutely despise camping, and always have since we went on a uh, guide camp, and Tracy Strange threw up Jaffa cakes in my hair. Oh no. Um and. It's yeah. I mean, I I didn't like it really before then, but uh, certainly after that, I I found it a bit difficult. And in fact, because my daughter went on a the first uh, scout camp they've done since lockdown, and I was like, oh, it's brilliant. Oh, you're gonna have such a great time, Emily. And then I dropped her off, and I was like, oh, thank God, I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. she did. She loved it. I think when you're young and you have a good back, then you can do it. But now yeah. the idea of sleeping on a a camping roll is it, it just my hips ache at the very thought of it. Yeah, well, we did, um, well, we had the, the local campsite near us. It, had, um, it was on the grounds of, like, a stately home, but the, the home had burnt down, like, like in the 50s, but they'd, yeah. the, they'd kind of left the ruins there. And the, you can imagine what the campfire stories were like then. And oh, when you, yes, spooky. When you are 11, yeah, it was terrifying. Oh, my God, because <laughs> we used... We used to go camping in because I was from Croydon, South London, yeah. and we used to go camping in a place called Coombe Woods, right. which was quite, you know, we used to toast our marshmallows on the cars the local youths had set on fire, basically. <laughs> so we had a different kind of ghost story, which is someone's going to come and mug you. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> and it normally came true. No, we had the proper Halloween. The, you know, the mother still lives in the house. She still haunts the house kind of thing. And we're camping oh. right around the corner. For it. it was terrifying. You, Ooh, could brilliant. You, could look at, you could see out that there was like a hut that you could kind of see out when you could see all the kind of ruins and it was all boarded up like something out like of Halloween. Oh my gosh. Um, oh yeah, that is yeah. terrifying. That was the best part of it. That was the, the ghost stories at like midnight. Yeah, we did go, we went off to, I, can't, I think it was, it might have been Polesden Lacey or somewhere, but uh, yeah, anything where you could do that thing of if you say the name three times into a mirror, they will appear. You know, we yeah. loved all that stuff. Okay, I mean, what, what, do you have any embarrassing stories that, you could, that you're that happy to tell us from your time as a brownie? Uh, oh, I mean, so, well, I was a terrible, um, because I was a tiny uh, runty, uh, would be the way I would describe myself. I was the smallest brownie, and all the other brownies had sort of better badges and stuff than me. But I do remember particularly once we did a sponsored goal scoring. It was netball. 
Oh. We did. You, you were sponsored per goal that you scored in netball. And my mum, I found a letter my mum wrote to my sister, who was away at university at the time. And in it, my mum said, please don't mention the sponsored goal scoring competition because Lucy didn't manage to score a single goal. <laughs> and she's feeling a bit sensitive about it. She said, I've explained to her that, uh, that the goal was further away for her than it was for the other brownies. <laughs> oh, dear. Brilliant. OK, on a kind of more serious note, there's talk about going back into lockdown again over winter, possibly restrictions again, blah, blah, blah. I mean, we've talked about haircuts and cookery and homeschooling. I mean, what, what would you do differently this time if that was to happen? <laughs> I mean, if it happens again, I think I might just take to my bed with some uh, strong liquor. And uh, well, I mean, you know, that that is what a lot of us did last time as well, really. But uh, yeah, no, I think actually I, it, I, I dread it. And I hope we do. I hope it doesn't come to it. But obviously, if we need to, then we must. And uh, so I think what I will do is I might try and uh, summon the spirit of my brown owl and create a campsite in the back garden, because basically we've ruined our house so much over the last two lockdowns. It is big, it's not really habitable anymore anyway. Have so I think that anyway. I'll invite no I mean I, I will invite you round Graham oh, you can brilliant. come and do spooky stories I'll burn yeah. down the house I'll, so you can recreate. I'll just not bring any cutlery and then bring yeah we don't need get, cutlery I'll ring we'll just walk for gap services and get you to come and pick me up <laughs> I would gladly do that absolutely gladly perfect okay just to finish then we do um we do a kind of just for fun section we've tried various different things um we found quizzes are quite popular so we've got a trivia quiz for you to see how, see how much you know your trivia Five random questions, oh. and they are really random. Okay, I love it. I love a trivia quiz. So bring it on. Uh, and it's a this or that, so it's one or the other. Okay. So first question is: What did Egyptian women use as contraception? Crocodile dung or bandages? Oh, I mean, you've got to say crocodile dung because it's the more okay. exciting answer. And it's the right answer. Yay! <laughs> okay. What is the offspring of a zebra? I mean, it would work as contraception in that what man would want to get near you if oh, you're yeah. covered in crocodile dung. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's a very basic form of contraception. I'm sure we used dung in scouts somewhere at some point. For I'm something. sure we did. <laughs> okay, next question then. What's the offspring of a zebra and a donkey called? Is it called a debra uh, or a zonkey? Oh, oh, hello. I thought it was called a zedonk. But... Oh, yeah. um, I on that basis I'm going to go for Zonky. Yeah, and you're correct again. Mm, I think yeah, I must have. I've been misinformed somewhere along the line. Yeah, me too. I didn't know that one, and I certainly didn't know this one. What is Scooby Doo's full name? Is it Scooby Doo or Albert <laughs> Doo? <laughs> <laughs> and I did not know this. That's a brilliant question. Um, Oh, I've been caught out before in quizzes with the full name of the uh, the gang as well, with, you know, Velma Dinkley and okay. Fred. Ah, oh, Fred. No, not Fred Willard. That's not, Anyway, th this isn't the question you've asked me. I'm answering a different question. I think it's going to be it's going to be Albert do. Oh, no, it's not. It's Scoobert do. Scoobert do. Oh, that's that's Wonder the better. Answer. I did not know that. I did not know he had a full name. <laughs> Scoobert Schubert. Yep. That was uh, Schubert's full name. Oh, OK, I didn't know that. <laughs> no. I... Every day of school, so you are a teacher. <laughs> Don't check it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I had to say with my children when I was schooling them in lockdown. Anytime I told them about that, I was like, Don't check it. Oh, I've done, Don't I've check done a few it. It's like so they, they now think that... Uh... <laughs> I've done a few of these so far. We've had, I've had people arguing. That OK, that's, yeah. That's, that's not correct and, like... Then they find out it is. You never argue with the quiz master. That is an absolutely golden rule. As someone who does a lot of quizzes, both hosting and uh, yeah. participating, never ever argue with the quiz master. You look like a, a, you know, I can't think of a word that's polite enough, but uh, you look like an absolute fool. Okay, I'll remember that then. Okay, so what did Henry VIII tax in fifteen thirty five? Was it beards or pubic hair? It was beards. Oh, impressive! Some of the yeah. Really good stuff. I actually knew that one, so uh, you know. Glad it was don't, right. Then. Don't ask me how, but you know, I mean, taxing pubic hair would be. Uh, I, I was going to make some joke about how much I'd have to pay, but let's leave it there. Let's not. <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> and that leads. That kind of randomly leads into the next question. Then, um, female <laughs> kangaroos have as many vaginas as octopuses have hearts. Is it three or five? Oh yeah, no, it's three. The three, three hearts, three vaginas. Oh, okay. Mm. 
I can tell you know your quizzes then. I do. Well, I do know a lot of random facts about vaginas and octopuses and all kinds of those. You're in my specialist area here, Graham. Okay. Thank you well, very much. I would have that. I'd have changed the, have changed the quiz completely. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I'd have changed the entire interview, but we're, we're at the end now. So. <laughs> So we'll we could have just done this for the whole time. We could have we just could talked do, yeah. about. I'm quite happy to pick this up when when you come up. I think you're coming up to Otley, so I'm quite yeah. happy to pick it up. Then we can carry oh on. Oh my and... god! Let's just do a big quiz. What we'll do after the show? I'll get everyone to stay behind, and we'll do a quiz. We'll do a massive pub quiz on on animal body parts. Amazing! I'd love it. Cartoon characters' full names. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Then I mean that you four out of five was quite impressive. Uh, well, I'll, I'll aim to do better next time. I'll see you in Otley and I'll uh, I'll get the full the full complement of uh, correct answers. Perfect. OK, just to finish then, I mean, you've got the tour coming up to the end of the year. You've got a few more dates coming up. What about 2022? Have you looked that far ahead? Oh, I mean, yes, I am doing a new I'm writing a new show. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to all being well and, you know, with uh, the the. Uh, I'm trying to think of what the, the phrase is anyway, but all being well, uh, I should be taking a new show to the Edinburgh Festival next year and yeah. touring that beyond. So, yeah, let's Brilliant. let's just hope we can all keep going. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, good luck with that and good luck with the rest of the year and the shows. And it's been really great talking to you. I've Absolute pleasure. Quite a lot. And I've admitted quite a lot more than I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love your stories. <laughs> That's been kept, kept hidden down. It's like a therapy session for me, this. Good. I hope you feel cleansed and purged. Yeah, yeah. Go on with your day. Are still embarrassed. So, <laughs> so because my, my grand, the, the Bon Jovi story, my my grandpa, my mum and dad didn't trust me, and then phoned my grandparents to see if I was all right, and I was still halfway back from Watford Gap, and they lied on my behalf. Did they? Yeah, they oh. said I was still asleep. I was very tired, and I was actually oh. in the back of the car, being driven, being that driven is... back by somebody's angry parent. Love what well, grandparents are the best, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, perfect. And on that note of embarrassment, I shall leave you to the rest of the afternoon. And, uh, oh, and, uh, lovely to speak to you. Yeah, and uh, well, hopefully, um, yeah, do uh, come and see me in Otley. Just camp outside camp with your beans, you'll be fine. <laughs> All right, my love, take, take care. Take nice to see day. you.